All right, so, so where did we leave off here in 1 Kings now? 1 Kings 22 and verse what? Again, we love uh, this story of Micaiah, the son of Imla, coming and telling these men the truth of the Lord and how that, of course, they didn't want to hear it, but God had warned them, and, of course, everything he told them came true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's interesting that we don't see... In 1 Kings 22, we don't see how that the Lord um, is much talked about in what happens here at this battle. Because again, we're seeing it from Ahab's perspective. And so the Lord has not rightfully given his due of honor and glory in Israel being defeated uh, in this battle. And of course, it's a sad lament of the death of Ahab. Mm-hmm. But in Second Chronicles 18, we see here the account given in the Lord is honored Mm -hmm. and recognized because now this is Jehoshaphat's perspective Mm -hmm. who survived the battle. See? So, so let's go ahead and read it. I know we read, did did we read some of it last time? I thought we did. (coughs) And I'm not sure. In Second Chronicles 18, let's go to Second Chronicles 18. Verse 1 says, Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. And after certain years he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. So... Mm-hmm. A little what we got going on there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, And Ahab king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to the dream of Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art my people, as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today, therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he, they said, Go up, for the Lord, for, for, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. Of course, and that was a lie. It's deception. Right. Right. And see, many times the Lord will give you just what you want. You know, If you hate him and don't love him, then he'll right. give you lying spirits and lying prophets. Yep. So that you'll be deceived, and you will be damned. It's like Second Thessalonians chapter two. You don't want to believe on the Lord of the King James Bible? That's fine. Go ahead then, believe the lie, mm-hmm. and you're going to be damned because you wouldn't receive the love of the truth that you might be saved. Mm-hmm. For that cause, God will send them a strong delusion, and they'll believe that lie, brother. Yes. And they're going to go line right up and take the name, number, and mark of the beast. It'll be the churches that encourage people to do it. I was so appreciative, Brother Ed, of that article of Brother... uh, Schaefer. Yeah, Francis Schaefer. Man, that was right on, wasn't it? Didn't that sound like Pastor Dan? (laughs) I can't tell you how much it's important that you have a Bible that has absolutes. See, right. That's what these new versions don't have, nothing in absolute. Right. It's all like Darwin. Darwin was what God gave the world. The world didn't want the word of God. They didn't want to believe in the God of creation. Uh-huh. So they give him a preacher named Charlie Darwin, uh-huh. Anglican, yeah. right. minister. Uh-huh. Put it in his heart to deceive the whole world. And most of the world hook, line, and took it, hook, line, and sinker. 
because their to their God is not a God of absolutes. Right. Mm-hmm. See. Mm-hmm. Relative truth. But at the end, you better accept me for what I am. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, you racist, you. And so Second Chronicles 6, Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Second Chronicles 18.7 The king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man. Hallelujah. Lord, help Amen. us to always be that. Amen. One man. Amen. By whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. Amen. Oh. Yeah. That's the way. We're getting a little personal. Yeah. See? They're hating the messenger for his message. Amen? I hate him for he never prophesies prophesied good unto me, but always evil. Mm -hmm. The same is Micaiah, the son of Emla. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers, said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Emla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on this on his throne clothed in their robes and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria and all the prophets prophesied before them and Zedekiah the son of Chenanah had made him horns of iron and said thus saith the Lord with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed And so we see this uh, by these, talking about his two horns he made. I guess he's implying that's Israel and Judah, see. Mm -hmm. And he's going to shove the king of Syria away. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, go up to Ramath Gilead and prosper. See, it's all about prosperity. Here it is, right there. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Surely prosperity is proof of the Lord's being on someone's side straight out of hell. Mm -hmm. It's just proof that Satan's the God of this world. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like unto theirs, and speak thou good. See, since they're all united, let's not spoil it by bringing something negative in here. We've got such a spirit of unity going on. And that's the watchword of this hour. You don't want to be an old stick in the mud, do you? And speak thou good. Verse 13, and Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And that's the right philosophy to always have. Amen. Amen. You should be able to quote what God says. If any man speak, the New Testament says, let him speak as the oracles of God. God. Amen. But the truth is, they don't even know if the Bible is the oracles of God. There might be some new, 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 new latest, latest, uh, discovery tomorrow that might really finally be the word of God as Dan Wallace promotes the Southern Baptist scholar what a joke verse 14 and when he was come to the king the king said unto him Micaiah shall we 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 all the way home shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear And he said, go, go ye up and prosper, <laughs> and they shall be delivered into your hand. Mm-hmm. And the king said to him, how many times have I, uh, shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? <laughs> Amen. Which shows that, see, he could discern. He did know the truth when he heard it. Yes. From a lie and flattery and lying lips. Yeah. Amen. Verse 16, then he said, 
I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Mm -hmm. Again, he said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Uh -huh. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. <laughs> then Zedekiah, the son of Janana, came near and smote Micah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Hmm. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. In other words, see, they'd already had the preacher in jail. So when they said, well, go fetch him, they brought him out of the jail to entertain them for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then they sent him back to jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. He had a wonderful prison ministry. But they knew where to find him. They, they knew where in the kingdom he abode. It was his abode. Amen? Amen? And so they fetched him when they wanted him. <laughs> Verse 26, And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction, until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken all ye people. Amen. I'll deliver my message to you or anybody else God tells me to deliver a message to, but at the same time, I want everybody else right. to take heed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let them know where they stand with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Hearken all ye people. Verse 28. So the king of Israel and Joseph at the king of Judah went up to Remath Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself. Mm -hmm. And will go to uh, the battle. But put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself. And they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots. That, every, uh, or that were with him saying. Fight ye not with small or great. Save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass. When the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his men, to his chariot uh, man, Turn thine hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot, 
against the Syrians until the even, and about the time of the sun going down, he died. So Ahab dies. And I just feel compelled to read on. 19.1, And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And having been right there, and he saw everything that happened right there in person, mm -hmm. he didn't quickly, quickly forget it. Right. Look how sober Jehoshaphat is. Mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat, the son of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, which was mentioned back there in 1610, mm -hmm. the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Amen. And see, this is, this is our message. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Bo Champ and MacArthur, all these guys are champions, great men, because they stand against the queers and the homosexuals mm -hmm. and the stupidities and apostates and for sure all the women preachers. And I can applaud them on those points. Right. But the truth is they keep quoting from the same Roman Catholic manuscripts and Roman Catholic approved new versions. Mm -hmm. That's right. So they're really not too great a champion for the Lord. Because in truth, they continue to help the ungodly. Then they lie talking about what champions they are for religious freedom and that when, of course, they're all bought and paid for by the state. Mm -hmm. with their 501c3s. But they want to act like, oh, that's not been in any problem. And yet, Brother Finney was telling me how he's read the court documents. And yeah, it says right in there that they were all bought and paid for. But they pretend to be these great champions, you know, and their, their little uh, macaws keep championing in the, you know, on the computer, you know, oh, these wonderful men of God. In other words, the implication is no. You're not supposed to help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord. That's right. And hate his book. Which of devils. Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. Mm -hmm. So they had a little tiny stay of God's judgment and a little bit of a revival. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he sobered up. Right. Yeah. It scared him good. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed. What ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. Now that's what a judge is supposed to do. Right. You're not in it for the highest paying political party. Right. Right. Or highest paying person. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be judging for the Lord who's with you in the judgment. Amen. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity, no, no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts, which is so common in the court yes. systems. Oh, man. Yes. See, this is what the Bible's telling you. You know, I was so <laughs> sickened. But reminded how, see, they all knew that election back in 2020 was rigged. Mm -hmm. Right. 100% totally rigged. Thousands of people ready to testify. Thousands of people willing to, thousands of comparisons of signatures like that happened in Arizona. They don't even match. It's nowhere near. Mm -hmm. Somebody forged somebody's name on a mm -hmm. ballot. And yet it's pretended that, oh, no, nothing really happened because, oh, well, if, if all this was brought to light and it went before the Supreme Court, there would be civil war in America, and we do not believe we could survive a civil war. So because we do not believe we could survive a civil war, 
We chose, uh, can't we all just get along? Because at least we'll still be here and be a world power. So this is, they're just simply saying like all of our friends say when it comes to holding hands with the Catholic Church, it's just the lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I'm winning souls. Eternity will tell, my friend. Mm -hmm. Eternity Amen. will tell. So, I wanted us to see mm -hmm. how Second Chronicles acknowledges the Lord was involved very much so in everything that happened. Mm -hmm. Because Jehoshaphat got religion. <laughs> After being that close and watching how some guy just takes an arrow and pops it in the air and it killed Ahab. He knew as David said he was but a step between him and death. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. So praise the Lord. There was a little bit of a revival when Jehoshaphat got home <laughs> from this battle. Amen. And so now let's go to 1 Kings. Let's finish it up in 1 Kings then chapter 22. And we'll pick it up at verse 30. And uh, if you want to stand out of, of, of respect to the reading of the word, we'll read from 30 down to 36, okay? From 30 to 36. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle. But put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. But the king of Syria commanded his thirty and two captains that had rule over his chariot, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. In other words, he let them know, Oh, no, look, it's me, Jehoshaphat. I ain't Ahab. <laughs> You got the wrong king here. Yeah. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians and died at even. Hmm. He might say he was dead on arrival, amen? Yes, yeah. sir, amen. Jumping Jehoshaphat. <laughs> That's what it says. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city and every man to his own country. So, amen. So let's pray. Lord, again, we're so thankful for this wonderful biblical account of the fight there mm -hmm. and how it went down and yet how quickly a man can see his fellow die on the battlefield and himself spared. And we know that's caused many a man to come to know the Lord and love the Lord and live by the word of God the rest of his life because he knew that he only survived by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful for that. And help us appreciate the breath you've given us today. Yeah. And in Jesus' name we ask it. And amen. 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 So have a seat. We'll pick it up now at 37. So the king died and was brought to Samaria. And they buried the king in Samaria. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria. And the dogs licked up his blood. See, just like Micaiah told him. Mm -hmm. It would be. And they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord, which he spake. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did, and the ivory house which he made, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. 
So we've mentioned how there have been this affinity established between these two houses, and so because of through marriage, mm -hmm. there'd be sons and grandsons be able to maintain the throne. And so the Bible tells us um, that yes, his son Ahaziah would reign in his stead. Verse 41, And Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat was 30 and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 20 and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. Mm -hmm. And he walked in all the ways of Asa's father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. the high places were not taken down. Mm -hmm. He got rid of the groves, but he didn't do anything about those altars up there <laughs> on the high places. Mm -hmm. You've heard of friends in high places? Mm -hmm. some, some people have friends in high places, and that's places you don't want to have friends. Right. Because <laughs> they're usually a bunch of devils. Yep. It's definitely true in our society today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Friends in high places are often secret worshipers of pagan gods. Amen. We're working against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Ephesians six twelve says. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. Yep. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken down, for the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. Mm -hmm. So they continue to have those evil practices like they still do today. People are still worshiping Satan, still <laughs> sacrificing babies and the blood of babies and all that's still going on. Yep. But it's done in secret. Mm -hmm. and, and Jehoshaphat, verse 44 says, made peace with the king of Israel, which of course was accomplished through, like we said, the affinities and the marriages there, as was mentioned in Second Chronicles 18, 1 to 3, and Second Chronicles 21 and verse 2, who could reign over Israel and Judah in the case of the deaths of the kings in the battle. And Jeho Jehoshaphat made ungodly alliances with the kings of Israel because uh, they were, of course, related. Second Samuel thirteen three. So, verse forty five. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he sh that he showed, and how he warred, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah, and the remnant of the Sodomites, mm -hmm. which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. So God bless him. He did something right. He outlawed somebody. There was then no king in Edom. A deputy was king. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they went not, for the ships were broken at Ezai and Geber. Mm -hmm. Then said Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. Amen. Verse 50, And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoram his son reigned in his stead. Ahaziah the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel in Samaria the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal, see, mm -hmm. and worshipped him and provoked 
to anger the Lord God of Israel. According to all, and provoke to anger the Lord God of Israel, according to all that his father had done. So, the true motto for any nation is no king, but King Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's what was thundered in this land when the colonies were established. Right. When, of course, we rebelled against the king of England, old King Charles and King George. King Charles got his head cut off, and King George... Uh, of course, is who we rebelled from, and God let us win. Mm-hmm. Right. And that was the motto thundered by the holy preachers prior to the independence of the United States of America. Yes. Psalms thirty three twelve says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his inheritance. Amen. And we as a nation took that verse very seriously at that time. And that's right. why God has blessed us and we're continually being blessed, though we're no though we are not even acknowledging the Lord as our Lord and our Creator. Right. We're not even giving him his due benevolence for establishing us in this land. Right. That's why we're really in trouble. And when these world leaders have decided the new world Power will not be the United States and their dollar anymore, but it's going to be China, which is what they've decided. And, of course, China Joe is the reason that he's China Joe, and his son's taking millions, and he gets his 10% as the big one, as, as the big, whether they call him the big man or the big, yeah, yeah whatever he is. <laughs> the big cheese. The grand poobah. <laughs> to quote Fred Flintstone. <laughs> and so, God chose Israel, but the founders of America chose God. And that's why God has blessed us up to this hour as a nation, though we are definitely a nation that is turning its back and has turned its back on the Lord. And we're in deep trouble for that. Amen. Now again, there's a few of us old sticking the muds over oh, still here. We're still heralding the truth. And we can do it because we do know, like I mentioned earlier, that there's still this old United States of America back here behind this new communistic democratic one that they're shoving down our throats today. They think it's finally fashionable that all the world be communist. Because, well, it's going to be different this time. <laughs> the communism that failed in every nation it's been in up to now, mm-hmm. well, this time it's going to work. <clears throat> no, it's not. No, it's not. Amen. But they think so. And that's why, again, the trouble is, though, again, thank God our founding fathers loved the Lord so much and believed in the Lord so much that he gave them wisdom to put together the Constitution the way it was, and these men were geniuses. But we got idiots in charge now. Yep. And so that's why we are really in the last days. And we know we're worthy of God's judgment as a nation. Amen? So continue to pray that he will hide you in his hand. Amen? Amen. 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 That you can find shelter there. That you'll find him to be a shelter in the time of storm. Amen. Right. He'll cont- continue to feed you as, you know, the whole world is in famine. Because he can and he will. He'll not forsake his own. Mm-hmm. David said he's noticed that God takes care of his kids. <laughs> yeah. But the devil's kids, well, that's a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. So we can take courage today. Amen. 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 All right, let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for these great promises. Thank you that you're coming soon. Thank you that there's a few of us who can remain your prophets and boldly say, thus saith the Lord, and repent. Today, if you hear God's voice, harden not your heart. Help us to not quit, not compromise, Father, and in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.